Hey there, this is Danny B with This Old Car. And in this video, we say goodbye to an American icon. I'm talking about the Chevy Camaro. Now, before we move on, let me tell you about how the Camaro became. There's a, a story that kind of leads up to this American icon of a car. This all began in 1964 when the official unveiling took place at probably one of the largest exhibits at the New York World's Fair. The Ford Pavilion, also known as the Wonder Rotunda, uh, this pavilion was one of the most visited attractions at the fair, known for its innovative and futuristic design. I mean, check this out. Isn't that something? The Wonder Rotunda served as the main entrance to the Ford exhibit at the World's Fair. The Mustang was on display in and around the Wonder Rotunda, and visitors could ride in an all-new Mustang convertible on the Magic Skyway ride. In the first season alone, these cars, gliding effortlessly along an automated turnpike of tomorrow, traveled a distance equivalent to 34 times around the world. More than a hundred bright new convertibles move continuously, offering fair visitors the ride of a lifetime. Interesting fact, the ride was designed by Walt Disney and his staff. The almost 15 million visitors who took the ride were thus able to inspect the Mustang's interiors and familiarize themselves with its many available options and accessories. Boy, what a way to test a car, huh? And also, how good could you have it back in 1964? The Beatles, the Mustang, the Beatles, uh, the Mustang. It was an awesome decade to be young. A beautiful day, a Mustang day. Ford Mustang, practical enough for this family of five, yet beautiful enough to be honored with the Tiffany Gold Medal for Excellence in American Design. You know, since the Ford Mustang was introduced four months before the usual start of the 1965 production year, the earliest Mustangs are widely referred to as the 1964 and a half model by enthusiasts. My twin brother and I are about the same age as the Mustang, both born in June of 1964, so we're actually 1964 and a half twins as well. When Ford's Lee Iacocca planned to launch the first Mustang in the mid-1960s, he used TV and popular magazines to advertise it. The car showed up in ads on major TV channels, which were probably only three channels back then, <laughs> and on the front of Newsweek and Time, two popular magazines back in the day. And this turned out to be a great way to sell the car. Chevrolet, well, they didn't think much of the Mustang at first. They were on a nice ride selling Impalas and thought the Mustang was just a fancier version of the Ford Falcon. Ford, however, sold more than 400,000 Mustangs in its first year. Meet Mustang, the Ford Mustang, a completely new breed of car. So beautiful, Tiffany and Company awarded it this gold medal award for excellence in American design. And the price? just $2,368 FOB Detroit. You know, as sales grew for the Ford Mustang, Chevrolet began to really notice and decided that the Ford Mustang needed some competition. An innovation-focused program was fast-tracked to create a pony car for Chevrolet that could compete with the Ford Mustang. And guess what car that was? Camaro fiery new creation from Chevrolet. Here's an interesting fact. Back in the 60s, virtually all of the Chevrolet products started with a C. Uh, what starts with the letter C? Cookie starts with C. A Corvette, Chevelle, Corvair. So they had to think of a catchy name that started with a C. And that was 
Camaro. The story around GM at the time was that the name Camaro stood for an aggressive carnivore that eats Mustangs. Chevrolet had lost a few years of sales to Ford in the pony car vehicle segment, but had the advantage of learning from Ford's mistakes. The first was regarding engine displacement and output. The Mustang wasn't originally conceived as an actual performance vehicle, though it developed into one. Chevrolet prioritized performance from the start. The first generation of the Chevy Camaro hit the showroom in 1966 as a 1967 model and ran through about 1969. This model came as a two-door convertible or coupe model featuring rear-wheel drive and multiple engine options. The common engine featured a 230 cubic inch engine with 140 horsepower and the much stronger 396 cubic inch option with an output of 375 horsepower. You know, one of the highlights of the first generation was the pace car, which led the Indianapolis 500 in 1967, as you can see in this picture. Introduced on February 26, 1970, the second generation Camaro was produced through the 1981 model year, with cosmetic changes made for the 1974 and 1978 model years. The car was heavily restyled and became somewhat larger and wider with the new styling. The 1980 and 1981 Z28 models included an air induction hood scoop with an intake door that opened under full throttle. The third generation Camaro was produced from 1981 for the 1982 model year until 1992. Uh, these were the first Camaros to offer modern fuel injection, turbo hydromatic 700 R44 speed automatic transmissions, five speed manual transmissions, 14, 15, 16 inch road wheels, a standard OHV four cylinder engine and hatchback bodies. Man, those are some fantastic cars. The IROC Z was introduced in 1985 and continued through 1990. I happen to love the IROC Z. In fact, I had a 1985 IROC Z back in the day. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the NHTSA, regulations required a center high mounted stop lamp starting with the 1986 model year. The fourth generation Camaro debuted in 1993 as an updated F-body platform. It retained the same characteristics since its introduction in 1967. A coupe body style with a 2 plus 2 seating with an optional T-top roof. One of my favorites. Or they even had a convertible reintroduced in 1994. The standard engine from 1993 through 1995 was the 3.4 liter V6. Then the 3.8 liter V6 was introduced in 1995. You see how those engine sizes went into the metric system? Yeah. The Camaro received a complete redesigned and new platform in 2009 for the 2010 model year and fifth generation. This is pretty much what most of you younger viewers are used to seeing. The new body style used cues from the 1969 Camaro, including the grille, roof styling, quarter windows, and side trim. Unlike the 1969 model and the 2006 concept, the production model's quarter windows were fixed and hid a thick B-pillar behind the glass. Although not in continuous production for the entire period, the 2012 model year marked the 45th anniversary of the Camaro. And this was commemorated with a model available only in carbon flash metallic paint. This edition Camaro also included a unique strike package 
red, white, and blue interior stitching, as well as 45th edition exclusive 20-inch wheels. Look at these babies. On May 16, 2015, Chevrolet introduced the 6th generation Camaro at Belle Isle Park in Detroit for the 2016 model year. The launch, complete with previous generation Camaros on display, coincided with the vehicle's upcoming 50th birthday. The 2016 Camaro weighed 200 pounds less than its predecessor. Did you know that over 70% of the 6th generation's architectural components are unique to the car and that car only and were not even shared with any other current GM product at the time? For the 2017 model year, the 1LE Performance Package returned to the Camaro. This package built off the success of the previous generation 1LE, offering increased handling and track performance in response to customer demand. In 2017, Chevrolet offered two distinct 1LE packages for both V6 and V8 models, each visually distinguished with a satin black vinyl wrapped hood and specific wheels. For 2019, the Camaro received a facelift with the LS, LT, and the SS models gaining a new set of LED headlights and revised fascia designs. You know, unfortunately, sales began to decline in the last 10 years and have really declined since 2020. And so GM has decided to pull the plug on production just as they did between 2003 and 2009. Will some of us see it come back in our lifetime? Only time will tell. And so this story ends with the Ford Mustang once again left alone and as the best selling sports car in the US. Chevy unfortunately will stop production of the Camaro at the end of 2024, which is the year this video was recorded. Well, as they say, all things must come to an end. That is the story behind the iconic Chevy Camaro. I hope you liked it. What do you think? Please let us know. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button as it really helps us out. And hit that bell for future video notifications. This is Danny B. And on behalf of my brother and I, we thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time on This Old Car.